All right, guys, welcome to the second community call. Alex, do you want to take it away? Yep. Um, so I wanted to open up with, uh, with a little updates on our end. So the last week we've published all the, um, all the code contracts, uh, all the contracts uh, to the Rinky by network. So we have ERC 721, ERC 1155, our exchange contract, our, our proxy contract for ERC 20 and ERC uh, like NFTs. By the way, is any like everybody here understand the the NFT and ERC 20 proxy contract uh, case? Why do we need them? How do they work? I don't. Like, is anybody here who don't understand? <laughs> That's, that would be a better question. I'm one. Okay. I don't understand either. <laughs> I'm not a, a quick yeah. overview would be good. Okay, let me let me cover that first. So the way exchange works. So uh, all uh, in the ballpark, what our exchange contract does, it accepts two signed structures that are orders um, and, and checks if they are valid. One of the orders says, I want to sell NFT and I want to buy ERC-20. And allow, another says, I want to I wanna sell an ERC-20 and I want to have NFT, right? So the contract takes two of those um, structures. It, it checks like if they are correct or not, and it it checks if they if they match to each other. If like I wanna I wanna have ten ETH and I will and I wanna receive ten ETH, and then the contract calls actual transfer functions. So we call transfer function we we call transfer function for NFT from from the seller to the buyer, and we call transfer function for the ERC-20 from the, from the buyer to the seller, right? So contract calls these functions, but in order to call transfer, the asset isn't yours. If the asset is in, the, in somebody's wallet uh, sitting there and, and it's not ours, we can't transfer it from the contract. That's why the, we need approval. So there is this nice approval function. You can approve somebody else to move your assets. And uh, we have we sometimes we change this contract, the, the exchange contract, we, we, we deploy a new one. And imagine you have approved for the previous exchange contract to spend your NFT, right? And now you have a new contract and you really need to approve that again. So in order to escape from that situation, when you need to approve to several exchange contracts, we created the approval proxy, the approval proxy for NFT and approval proxy for, for ERC-20. So if you want to exchange your NFTs, you need to call approval to the CRC20 in this NFT contract. So you need to approve NFT to NFT contract and you need to approve ERC20 spending to ERC20 approval contract. Um, so basically like three contracts are participating in exchange. The, the exchange itself, approval from one side and approval from another side. Then we went a little further and for all the wearable assets, we pre-approved all the wearable assets to, to be there, but only like NFT. So we pre-approved wearable 721 and 1155 for this exchange process. You don't need to approve wearable uh, contracts, but still you need you, you try to sell for, for your C20, the buyer who wants to buy for your C20 needs to approve them. Um, Am I, am I, am I completely right here, uh, Evgeny? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right, but uh, it's coming. So it, it's included only in new contracts. In the old ones, it doesn't work. So yeah, you need to no. approve for the old contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. And yeah, what happens when I want to buy? Uh, if I already have the sell order and I want to match it, I want to sell a bid order, I just do I, I still need to make, make this approval, right? Before I, I, I create the buy order. I can't like attach it to the buy order, my money or something like that, send them. Yeah. Uh, uh, are you asking me something, Alex? Because yeah. yeah, I'm a 
sorry, I'm in the middle. Uh, I got no, to take no my worries. son. I will, I will ask okay. you separately and, and then okay. get back to you guys. Okay. 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 So yeah, uh, all of these contracts are listed in docs.variable.com slash, uh, slash contract addresses. Let me share the screen, by the way. I can't hear, can you, can you allow me to share your screen? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So we have this, this uh, page. So this is all the contracts. So this is the transfer proxy for your C20 approvals. This is NFT for NFT approvals, right? And this exchange contract, this is asset contracts. Okay, then on the API reference, uh, you, you're all familiar with that already. Uh, we have generate token by ID controller. We have lazy main controller. We have encode controller and order controller. All, all of them are the rest. We will, Mm, we will change the lazy minting controller a little. So you see here is this token required, the, the, the string address of the token. Uh, it's a little confusing what this token means. So we're changing that to word collection. So you need to pass the collection address. Yeah, that would be the small requirement, the small change on now. Um, so on the update side, yeah, I think that, that's more or less all. What, what we're working on right now inside the Rarible is transferring the Rarible.com marketplace to the protocol. So as soon as we finish that transfer, all the orders created on the protocol will be automatically listed on the Rarible marketplace. Our target for this is three weeks. So in three weeks, we will have this uh, protocol adopted by Rarible.com website and all the lazy items, all the lazy orders that you've created through the protocol would be listed on Rarible Marketplace. Um, so that's that's good to go. Then I, uh, it's it's the biggest thing happening uh, under hood now. Uh, also also for the protocol side. Um, I think let me let me check through my notes if we have something new here. Okay, we started to to implement staking. I'm not sure how how interesting that for you guys in that building on top of protocol. Um, and as soon as we finish staking, we will we will we will we will work on layer two solution. So EVM compatible layer two solution. Uh, if you want to, uh, so we, we basically like after migrating Rarible to the, to the protocol, we will be open up for new features on the protocol side. If you have some requests, please tell me, we would be happy to develop something new for you, for, for builders of the protocol. Uh, we have uh, three teams actually uh, in, in the same place of adopting protocol uh, in this error of 400 like wrong signature. Um, we haven't yet figured out like where the discrepancy uh, comes in. We should be able to figure out that today and we will update all of you on, on, on how to fix the, the JavaScript code for, for this to work. So this is on the lazy minting. I, I guess the same would be on the, uh, on the order side and we will publish the, the little snippet of, of lazy minting of items just for everybody to be on the same page. That'll be helpful because I had like a dozen contracts fail rapidly yesterday. So that'll be good to be able to have that and have a notification for it. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, but it's nice that that we're moving on, on that end. So I wanted, I wanted probably to ask here, like uh, we have this cozy team and uh, cozy meeting so what are your current states in, in adopting protocol? And uh, basically, yeah, I would, I, would, I would love to go team by team and ask like, what is the current state and what are the future plans in adopting the protocol? Like will, what will be the next feature after minting that you get adopted? Will you use orders, sales or, or indexing or what, what's, what's your like flow of, of working with, with protocol? And, and challenges too. 
potentially that you're you're facing if if you haven't yeah can we, so I, I i'm not sure order is the same for me you know who wants to go first isaac uh, sure so uh, with the mystery drop platform we're currently integrating against the lazy minting api um the thing that we'll we'll need after that is um we'll need people to be able to actually purchase them so i assume that the purchasing will take place i was assuming that we'd be able to redirect people to the variable marketplace to purchase them um, but if that if the if the protocol minted NFTs are not available there, we'll probably have to it, we might implement some sort of um, purchasing interface directly on our site. Um, not really decided there. Um, and then on the monetization side, uh, we were talking about just at the beginning of the call. There's so there's already of course the royalty system where you can split between two creators. But I was wondering if all of these different platforms that are creating different drop formats, perhaps they would only want to share the initial sale price and they wouldn't want to split with the artists like ongoing royalties. Um, so I was wondering if there could be eventually be a protocol extension where um, you could say like the first time this is sold, like uh, the, the proceeds are, are split between the plat the platform and the and the creator, but then in the future, it's just the creator's NFT, the creator's uh, royalties. So yeah, definitely understand. Are, are you, do, do users, have the wallet do they log in with the wallet to your to your platform yeah so i have a basically i have an um i have a so on our back end I, I built a custom authorizer uh lambda which it generates like a challenge response where you sign a message with metamask and then it gives you a jwt which is valid for a certain amount of time and that's what is used for the future authenticated sessions with our back end Okay, so if your users are able to sign messages and transactions, then they can they can basically uh, sign this the buy order and sell order on the front end, and you can submit them to protocol. So mm -hmm. not even uh, need to redirect users to the variable platform if you really want to have this end-to-end -end extension. And on the latter question, so you said the the distinction we don't distinct between the first sale and secondary sales right now in the protocol and <clears throat> but what you are saying can be achieved just so when how do you want you, you said this first sale uh you want the platform to have more fees right on it yeah let's say that you know for the way that for example we could monetize is we if you do a drop on the mystery drop platform um, we have, we take, we can say we'll have, I don't know, five, 10% of your first sale. Um, but I don't think I'd be comfortable saying we get to, we get a share of royalties in perpetuity. Right. Cause I guess specifically for this application, it's really just a drop app, right? Yeah. It's not like, it's not like all the, the secondary sales, like you shouldn't benefit from, from the initial drop from that. So I, I could see how, how that makes sense. Could you take a percentage of the, the sale instead of the royalty, uh, the fee? Like, uh, yes, yeah. yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be implemented as a royalty. I'm just wondering, like, could there be a way that, imagine that you have a bunch of applications like ours that want to create new drop experiences and they just want to take a cut of that first sale. Okay, so let, let me show you this. When you create an order, you can, you can uh, have several, uh, so you have this data here. So when you create an item, you specify the royalties, right? And the royalties would be author only. You don't want to have royalties in perpetuity, all that. Uh, but then do you mint an item directly to the user's wallet, right? Mm -hmm. So they can take that wallet and they can take that item and go and sell it whatever they want, wherever they want on OpenSea, for example, or Rarible, mm -hmm. like any other marketplace. And you won't have a cut on that in that uh, sense. Then you would want on that that first sale. So imagine we late we did a lazy minting uh, sale, and when that lazy mint thing is sold, ninety percent goes to creator, ten percent goes to the platform. But then in the future, it's just standard royalties for the creator. Okay, so when you create this lazy mint sale order. You can actually, there is this beneficiary. You see this? Um, so this is unupdated yet, unupdated functionality. So it's an order structure and there is a data field underneath mm -hmm. it. 
And this data is basically like any protocol extensions would come through data. Mm -hmm. And we already created one protocol extension that allows you to pass multiple beneficiaries, multiple addresses that would receive the part of the sale. It's not like we can make a distinction, distinction between the first sale and secondary sale. But if you build this sale order for the user, when you were creating this uh, token, you can, you can pre-build your 10% your here in mm -hmm. beneficiaries. Cool, and this would just be for that initial sit. Oh, cool, because this is just creating an order, so it's yeah. So it would be the... for this specific order. Well, yeah. now as a user, I can actually go and say like cancel order, right, on variable. Yeah. Uh, and 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 take that item. I don't know, uh, mint it and and take it away. Yeah, I mean right. the whole. The, the, that's fine to me because the entire royalty system is gameable anyway. Um, yeah. So this is. <laughs> This is sufficient, I think. So that's cool. Yeah. So I, I also think this is sufficient. Just trying to like uh, make all the caveats here to understand. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, you can pre-build your yourself in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I didn't know that this existed. So this this might actually already cover our use case. Yeah. And you can you can specify multiple multiple uh, beneficiaries here, and moreover. There is one more field for origin fees. When you're building an order, you can also specify your origin fee in it. You can say that we, as an origin, would take we take two percent of that of that fee. Mm -hmm. cool. And I think the only difference for that would be the way we display that. So the beneficiaries, this field is actually meant for several people selling the drop. So there is a five, five collective creators and they are selling and they want all to be beneficiaries and have like 20% of the job. And this origin fees is more like for the uh, entity that broadcasted that order, that created that order, the, the, the platform that created that order. So probably it even, uh, makes more sense for you to make the origin fee of 10% than, than the beneficiary. Does the beneficiary, say you have three beneficiaries, does it get split three ways or can you specify the... You can specify, yeah. So it's it's outdated. It's the same basically uh, as this. You, you pass the array of account and value for each. And this would work on secondary sales? No, for secondary, it's for each order. So if you are creating a secondary order, you can you can specify this. So there, there is no like first order and secondary order, right? Uh, so it's it's always an order, a buyer and sell order. It would work on any order that you've created for the user and user signed. So I have a question. Uh, would it be worth it in the future to have a uh, a value where you can define an equation where you can like specify like decaying returns for orders in the future through the variable protocol? Decaying return for the origins in the future. Well, I mean more for, uh, for like royalties and stuff. Or yeah, you can, you can that's actually the third way to, to build in your royalties. When you create an item, for example, lazy mint, right? There is this royalties field. And this royalties are living inside the item. So You've created that item, it would have these royalties. Whenever it, the, the item gets sold on wearable by any other order, the, the, the guy created order himself, other platform created order, whatever order came from, it would respect royalties because royalties are for like any se secondary sales. Right, but for this though, it looks like it's just a value of like an integer. Uh, is there a way to define an equation so that way we, in the future we can like gamify our, our, our royalties and stuff like that? <clears throat> so like, like every sale royalty decreases, or, decreases. Or every, yeah, stuff like, like that. Marketing. So that way it decreases like people trying to like gain the system or something like that and just selling back to themselves constantly and like generating history that doesn't need to be there and stuff like that. It's an interesting, so there is, yeah, there is so far it's flat integer. Okay. We have this external royalties contract that allows you to specify 
actual like royalty provider contract. So it would say for the token, for the token address like this, or the collection address like this, all the royalties are answered by the specific contract. Mm, so you hand off the 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 logic to somebody else externally that you could define. So we logic. hand off this yeah. interface, like return royalties for us. And you're the the integer that you have right now is like the normal BPS kind of financial, like that's how you guys handle it. I'm guessing. So how it handles in the event of order gets matched, the contract calls this royalties interface. Of the of the item, so let me show you. But it's like basis points, right? Like in financial world. Yeah, I think I like saw. Basis points information. Yeah, I think I saw that. Okay. So here is this seven twenty one contract. It's a proxy contract, so we need to use these tabs. And, and and the and while you're pulling that up, and the reason I'm asking is because. Right now, what we're doing internally is we're trying to develop. Uh, we're adding. We're, that's what exactly what we're doing is we're adding the equations. Um, where you can configure equations to like uh, add like um, decaying returns, so that way the the owner or the original person who like created it previously still gets some returns, but in the future, um, everybody that sells it down the line gets a diminishing return. So that way, it's there. There's less um, like likelihood of people just selling back and forth to like accumulate fees and stuff, and like trying to like increase their value of their stuff, which is like which is happening on OpenSea. Like people sell to themselves just to say, oh, well, this thing has so much value. I'm going to sell it at like 50% off when in actuality, it was never worth that much, right? Yeah, I've got it. It's an interesting idea. So the way you can make that work, you see this get royalties uh, call. It's the 721 contract, our variable 721. And it has this get royalties interface. Oh, okay. I so see. you can you can actually fork the contract. Yeah. And so it's create... extendable, basically. That logic is extendable. And there is no logic inside, right? So we just call it with this token ID, and it answers like how many royalties for that item we need to pay, and we pay that number of royalties. Gotcha. So like this could be a separate module in like things somewhere else where we set up logic and we can add it to the system. Yeah, inside your own contract, inside your 721 contract, you can define that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, That's interesting. Although I need to check with the team, right? So we have a built in protection. So, like, now imagine this situation when you've gamified the system that way that it gets 10 sales with zero royalties and 11 sales is 100% royalties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You obviously don't want to be in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't really, we can't really like say people how that works because there, there, we can't display all the logic behind that call uh, when they initially purchase. So they might end up in a situation when the royalties suddenly increase. So we've built in caching system. We, we call that once as far as I remember. And we remember the, the, the amount it returned us. Okay. Uh, so, might... okay. So you're, you're expecting, you, you, you're expecting some kind of, a, a, um, repeatable number to be pushed back. Yeah. Oh, okay. We might extend that to say something like, it so should only decrease, yeah. right? Well, is there is there is there a way of maybe even extending those contracts further to to also return back a model instead of like an equation instead of that of, of just like asking for the values out, and that way you could just calculate it on the front end and like update it instead of caching the return value. Okay, so it's. It's returned equation or only decreasing royalties, right? Uh, I need I need to check back on our contract if we yeah. can implement that. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm getting too much into the weeds, but I like that. That's how our system that we're that we're building is working, um, and we're doing a lot of. It's very heavy equation based and not so much like just returning static numbers back, right? 
Okay, and um, what's what's the broader use case for your for your product for your project for your protocol? Um, what we're what we're trying to do is is create um, systems that encourage liquidation, encourage transfers, so like they can get like rewards and stuff like that. Or um, also, it's also to help like fight against gamification against our equations. So like we also have the whole point of it is to um, try to strengthen an, an economy of things going back and forth but also make sure that it's like real transactions and not people going on open sea and selling their shit back and forth to, inc to increase their value of what their, what their assets are. Um, Cause that's a, a huge problem that we foresee that's going to be happening soon. So it's a, it's a minting platform that allows you to mint this NFT with specific royalties. Yeah. And I, I mean, I can go into a little bit cause I, you, I guess you probably were kind of going through different projects real fast. Um, yeah. So my project is, is a, is the first NFT um, powered uh, social network where it, that's focused on mobile creators like TikTok and Instagram and, and those kind of creators uh, where they can shoot video and pictures on their phone and create a post on our social network and that becomes an instantly an NFT and it's all like a, it's very heavy on like being able to monetize and own your content um, and part of it is that whole economy of, of having things move back and forth but we have to create an economy that's um, not easily gamed on their side on user side but it also can be fun and gamed on like the right pathway right it's it's really nice it's really great idea i'm we're already in production we're in beta right now can you show some 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 i don't know materials probably later or now sure. I, mean, I could share it in the group or something yeah if you guys want yeah to. yeah they uh, have a channel uh Huddlin has a channel so yeah, they so, yeah. share share information in there. They also have an app, so you can download and test it out. Yeah, yeah. If you have iOS, you can search it up in the iOS App Store under Huddle and H U D D L N. If you guys want to check it out, you can create an account and you can download the the app, create an account, and mint something. Oh, what's the name again? The name. Yeah, I'll type it in here. H U D D L N. I mean, one of the things I was talking to Joe about, which I thought would be cool to add in the protocol, is they when you mint an NFT, um, people can stake on an NFT. Uh, and if they stake on it, uh, they can get a portion of the fees, right? Um, you can probably explain it better than me, Joe. But it's, it's yeah. an interesting curation mechanism that could be cool for the program. Yeah, the, the mechanism is basically allowing people to invest in content directly. So it's uh, NFTs or any other future standards that come out in, in, later in the future um, where social networks and game networks and all kinds of networks can plug into the protocol um, and people can invest in content and basically uh, purchase like temporary ownership in content. And it allows like artists and uh, creators to um, have some kind of income for their content without having to go and auction and sell it off and um, sell it to somebody else. They could still own their stuff and 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 still gain um, uh, money from it. Basically, that's really cool. We have to connect afterwards because one of my startups we just finalized 30 days ago a contract with Activision to pull when performance happens in game top one percent on Warzone. It pulls a 10 second GIF of that clip that could be converted to exactly what you're talking about. So we should connect after. Sweet. Yeah. Um, I'm also working on other partnerships too, um, that are super interested of uh, social networks and, uh, there's other people I can't talk about yet, but, um, yeah, it's, it's the use case is, um, very broad, extremely broad. Um, basically letting people invest in content is, um, we think that the next big wave, we just had the NFT wave, but we think like the next big wave is going to be like creator content investing, um, and being able to like really merge all these different like DeFi instruments with content. That's like the next big way that's going to be happening in 2022. DeFi instruments and content will be huge. Yeah, that's, that's all about automating the market. So right now, if you want to sell your song, you need to actually go and sign a contract on paper. And then that paper sits in a, so antiquated. In a publisher in a publisher office and this publisher goes and sells that uh, that content that they bought to other people again saying that like on paper so basically what's happening here we are making putting all of that on chain and allow it to be traded like 
instantly wall street style you, you can you can fractionalize you can invest you can you can buy you can resell you can receive royalties all of that so slowly like rebuilding that system oh yeah. and immigration's gone so yeah. like it happens faster yeah so yeah. like i was gonna say too is like um we we really believe that the like the next wave is going to be co very extremely content focused but like we see right now like tiktok and everybody else is creating these funds and stuff like that and it's just so, such an antiquated way of doing things that we don't have to be involved as a company like we can cr we can give you everything at like a native level all the instruments um indirectly and you can create your own economy based on your content and and, and all your ownership and we as a company don't have to be actually be involved, right? Especially if you can do the structure, right? All the way down the chain with like different variables for each, right? Then you really can do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's our vision. Um, so I'd like to just move on uh, just just to get a chance to other project to speak up. Um, yeah, thank you for moderating. Yeah. Someone thank else, you. Greg or Lewis or uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I talk? Guard? Yep. Yeah, uh, I mean, like as for myself, like I, I don't have like a specific project at the moment, but I, I'm like super excited about this potential of uh, lazy minting. And I have like several ideas that, but it really depends on, depends on like what the platform could actually provide. And I kind of like in an abstract way, I, I kind of get like, like what, what it makes possible, but that's why I'm trying to like build all these uh, prototypes. I'm trying to get the, the the thing to work, and I I would only like be able to like crystallize the ideas better once I actually see like the, the prototypes working. Uh, so like that's that's my stage right now, and I, I have some like questions. Is so based on like what uh, Alex said earlier. So like, is it correct that? Um, so the lazy minting is actually already working on prod, but it's just not showing up on the, the website. Yes, it's already working on the protocol. You can push lazy minted items to the protocol. You can query lazy minted items from the protocol and you can sell them with the orders, okay. right? But the marketplace is not yet on that. So it's actually, we can get into the funny states when all these projects that that are building on top of protocol would have it first and then the, the the marketplace would adopt it second so like when you say marketplace so to, to, like if i if i lazy mint something to like not not to the api staging uh endpoint but the, the production endpoint uh it'll have its own like landing page as of today no there is no landing page oh. uh, it, yeah. you, there is another API that, that can get you all the lazy mint items, not only by you, but other protocol users as well. Okay, and that's, and what's that's, happening. Like, that's what's gonna change like in three weeks? Yes, that's when Rarible would also pull this lazy mint items and display them on the, on the main page, on the main marketplace. Okay. That's significant okay. for the community. Yeah, I, I think it's really like it. It's like I don't think a lot of people realize the potential of like what what this is gonna bring. Like, it, I, I'm sure it's gonna bring a lot of network effect to you guys because I I I couldn't find anyone else actively working on lazy minting like open API yet. So this is uh, I'm excited. And yeah, it's exciting that lazy minting actually becomes one of the like more de most demanded features. Uh, and one one other question was, uh, so I saw the API and there's a like sell order and there's buy order, but the buy order uh, basically depends on the sell order because you have to buy something that someone said they're gonna sell. But I was curious if 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 you can actually, so like basically uh, if I lazy meant something and someone just comes and say I'm gonna buy, even if I didn't say like I'm gonna sell. Yeah. So, so buy, buy order could happen first and sell order could happen next. Exactly. It's how bid or bidding works. Oh, really? So yeah, already like just, just like just by posting the first request to lazy minting, anyone else can come in and make a buy order. 
even they if can make it. make a buy order and and then this all buy orders would be stacked up as bids okay and you as a creator as a seller you can come and see okay i have a lot of buy orders here let me let me match the highest buy order and that would be an auction oh okay yeah that's great like i, I that that's exciting all right um next up yeah, I'd be happy to go. Um, so uh, my name is Luis uh, from Mintgate. Um, we're, our project is focusing on like um, gating content, like any online content, you can gate it with like a token, it can be a ERC20, 721, 1155 token. So, you know, like it could be a video, it could be a blog, it could be a website, it could be APIs. And so in order to access any of these things, someone has to have your token. Uh, we have the system already built out where you can token gate all these things, and we support existing tokens on Ethereum, XDAI, Fuse, and uh, Matic slash Polygon. Um, what we uh, realized, though, is we need more accessibility for people to be able to do this. And so we created an internal system of creating, you know, off-chain tokens, uh, basically just using a database so that people can use these, our own, you know, gate tokens to do the same behavior using our token gating system. And we were going to be moving towards uh, minting these, <clears throat> minting these on chain. When around the time, you know, we found this, uh, you know, variable variable protocol, and this really solves our problem and is already kind of built for us. So we figured this is much better than us trying to like, you know, build out smart contracts for royalties and then marketplace and do all these things. We'd rather integrate and have all this. So effectively, what we do is um, we have in our database, you know, creator creates a certain amount of these gate tokens. That's the limit to how many of these gate, uh, tokens could be minted on chain. And we measure that on our end. And then we just have the API calls integrated so that when someone's minting, they're, we're just using the lazy mint function effectively. So they're minting the, the tokens on chain, not necessarily creating a buy order for it first. Um, and then once they have mint these tokens on chain, they can declare the royalties they, they want. We probably use the same standard, like 10, 20, 30%, I think that Rarible uses on its marketplace. Um, and then we ourselves would implement a 2.5% royalty for tokens that are using gated our gating links as well to support the token protected pages aspect. And uh, our initial uh, iteration was essentially to just allow them to mint these, you know, just pay gas costs, no buys, no sells, and then just have them take them to whatever marketplace they want afterwards, um, you know, ideally, obviously, variable. And then our next stage after we have this, you know, flow effectively built out and, you know, streamlined and working well, uh, we would probably work towards adding the marketplace and integrating marketplace features into the app as well. I really like the idea of staking and also the idea of like, you know, more DeFi integration because uh, an, a cool idea I had was like, if you could, someone created a gated link or a gated token link and then had a token, they could lend it out and be earning interest for a period of time that like, you know, someone else is like borrowing in order to access some content or access some APIs or whatever it is. And then, you know, for that duration, they earn interest and maybe there's like an additional bonus to doing that. But that's, again, that's like, I don't know, it's several steps ahead, so. Thank you. Uh, do you have any particular problems or issues with integrating variable protocol now or uh, anything you wanna share? Let me see. Um, right now, it's been, uh, I haven't had enough time this weekend is when I'm really going to be able to like, you know, uh, put myself like heads down into the code and everything. Um, I do get an execution reverted um, when I uh, updated a few things last night, but you know, that was last night and I only spent like a couple hours. So I need to like tinker on it more. So I probably will be messaging in the discord group to actually, you know, clarify because I need to isolate like what this actually is before I think, you know, it'd be helpful for me to just kind of like, yeah, I have this error. It could be like a dozen different things, so. Okay, so we, we've uh, cleaned up a little space and I will be able to share, to spend more time in the Discord uh, answering all the questions. So please don't, don't like hesitate to contact us. It's our best interest. Um, thank you for building that. Sounds great. No, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, one quick question. Uh, so, I mean, the, the reason that I asked about like why, why buy, buy order has to rely on sell order was because if you go to the docs.rarable.com, uh, the creating a sell order has the lazy minting example, but buy, the, the buy order section is, is only talking about like creating an actual on-chain transaction. So it would be nice if there's a more like documentation about the, like how to create lazy 
uh, not, not lazy, but creating a buy, buy order and submitting it to the endpoint. I'm trying to get, okay, it's an awesome question. Let me, let me, so, uh, questions. Why order for lazy minting, right? Okay, yeah, that's actually interesting. So you can definitely make a buy order for lazy minting, but we, we need to get back with the way, uh, how exactly to make that. Thanks, that's, that's super helpful. Okay. Does that yeah. cause an issue Greg? right now? Yep. Does that cause an issue <clears throat> if you follow that flow, if you put a bid in for something that's not minted? No. It it should it should it should get minted only when in the event that your bid get accepted. Mm, okay. So you go, you make five mints. The mint isn't a transaction. Oh, the bid isn't a transaction. Bid is a structure, signed structure. So you, you make this five bids, five by orders, and then one of them gets accepted. The match function calls the mint function and it, it's, it gets minted already to the buyer. Okay. Yeah, and that's what I meant. Like if, if you look at the documentation, probably because it's outdated, but it, it assumes that like that assumes that it's already on chain. And uh, so like if, if the documentation, like if we have like a code snippet for how to like once you complete this feature, uh, it doesn't have a flow chart. That if it was there's a flow chart, it'd be easier to see. Yeah. Okay. Question flow chart. Let me. Okay. I will try to prepare some. Yeah, we're definitely working on how to simplify things. So we would love to pre-build something, make flowcharts, make documentation. So if you have some ideas, that's definitely helpful. Because I don't know it's it's a five-step process now. It's not an easy one, one to follow. I saw you're, Greg. You're uh, Greg had a question. Yeah. I saw him trying to speak earlier. Oh no, no, I was actually just going to give a quick update about. Oh, what we're doing. Go for it. Um, but if you guys want to have any other questions before I jump in? Yeah. All right. Cool. So on the picnic side, you know, right now we're still on snapshot. Our thing closes tomorrow. So yeah, if anybody would like to vote for us, we'd really appreciate it. Um, but right now we're just heads down. We're hoping to get an MVP up by early to mid next week. Um, in terms of what we're doing with the Rarible API protocol right now, uh, mostly just trying to get the token data and bid data and stuff like that from uh, the Rarible API. So we can display that. Um, so I think I don't really have any major technical questions. I know I had a couple last week in Discord and Eugene helped out with uh, a lot of the lazy minting bid order stuff. Um, I guess really just for you, Alex, um, are you guys putting any rate limits or anything in place? Because I think as you know, being a site builder, one of the things is you, you know, you sign up and then we go and fetch all the tokens that you've created and owned. And so getting that plus the bid data and all that, it's just lots and lots of individual API requests. So I just want to make sure we're not going to get hit with any type of rate limits or anything. So we don't have any rate limits yet. And I think when we will have, we'll make sure that uh, all, all your requests are like, I don't know, are, are, are so all, all your rate limits are above the, the request that you're making because, well, well obviously we're, we're making that for you. <laughs> we wouldn't want you to, to run into any issues. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think that was kind you of the on, on Snapshot, what, what is the proposal? Oh, it's the create NFT marketplace insights. Picnic, right? Yeah, Picnic. Yeah, make custom NFT sites marketplaces. Okay. What do we have here? Okay, got it. Yeah, it's so pretty straightforward for now. Um, you know, we're gonna launch in a couple of small phases as we get our MVP out. So, 0.1 should be out by mid next week, um, and then we'll iterate on 02 and 03 over the next few weeks. Um, and that way, we're kind of timing everything with the launch that you guys have on mainnet. Um, so, we're gonna be doing minting and and uh, collecting and curation and some other things like that to make be able to get the things that you own and create, let you be able to create pages and 
also be able to list those for sale and accept bids and all that through a dashboard. So um, yeah, we're really excited to be working through all this. Cool. Awesome. Right. Thank you for the update. Yeah. Any and then once we have something, I'll post in Discord and share links with you guys. Awesome. Uh, anyone else want to go? Um, awesome. Um, I was thinking it'd be good to have like, uh, like, like examples, like, you know, he, here's a sample project. You know, this is how, here are the steps to, to, to build and deploy, build your fee in, you know, like end to end type of thing. Um, but I'm saying that as a non yeah, dev so I don't know. I, I, just intuitively, I feel like that would be useful, but. Agreed. For people who come after us, absolutely. So we, we will build a sample project for lazy minting. Uh, Eugene is working on it now. It, it's actually, by the way, um, as soon as, as soon as we do that, like if anybody wants, like is really, so uh, I'm not sure how to refer to you as KO guard. Uh, so if, if you don't have a project yet, you can help us build a sample project uh, uh, or SDK or something like that. That can be a nice initiative if you're just playing out. Uh, for, for everybody yeah, I mean, like, uh, yeah i was actually planning to like write write some like library uh to make things simpler uh as like my first experiment uh but i got stuck so <laughs> i'm just waiting yeah. for it to get resolved so we will definitely get resolved I, I know guys what i can really promise you like all of you here is that like we have a team that will be working on developing this like i don't know years from now and and the the closest year we, we are in an active development so there will be like protocol features protocol updates week after week after week after week and we're in a close contact i i'm the i'm like the product person for the protocol so it's it's like <laughs> it's not that like there is something uh, everybody's stuck uh, or something like that. So we're here. We would get everything resolved. We would get everyone to, to production. We have funding from the DAO. So that's that's the best part about it. We, we just started. It's going to be huge. <laughs> yeah. I think we, we feel the momentum. So super exciting. Building. Love enthusiasm. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of buying some uh, rarity tokens. <laughs> <laughs> well uh skogard if, if you do want to help with uh documentation and you know helping out like i would i would love to you know help you put a proposal up you can get a bit of rare tokens from the dao uh you know and and you know provide something super valuable i, I yeah yeah i'm happy to know. yeah i really love guys i, I don't know i really like, love today's call we're like the, the most engaged team now. Everybody's building something. So we'll, we'll sort this this small issue out and make everyone uh, do great. I'm really excited about it, all of it. Yeah, things are going to get really interesting and weird soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have a lot of ideas for the protocol, like layer two on chain order book. If you really want to make like buys and sells from another protocol right now you can't like uh, you can't push to the backend from the protocol right you can't call a backend api but another contract can call just buy and sell function uh so it, it, there is a lot of like new stuff for for the protocol and uh, if you have any ideas any requests let, let's build it i just had a question about the l2 since you brought it up did, are you like when you say L2, are you thinking of like Polygon or like have you looked into other like CK rollups and, 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 and stuff like that? So we're looking for EVM solutions at first because we, we are constantly improving protocol. It would be just almost impossible for us to rewrite that to another language and, and keep the same rate of innovations. So we're looking at EVM compatible chains. So Polygon would probably be the first. Uh, 
ZK Sync wants to make ZK rollup EVM compatible ZK rollup by the early, like uh, late summer. And so EVM compatible ZK rollup sounds really great. Um, and then there is like near blockchain that has EVM compatibility. Uh, late summer, there would be Moonbeam, the Polkadot parachain that is EVM compatible. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that this EVM would be long, long with us. Uh, and we want to adopt like one by one. So we want the NFTs to be interoperable like everywhere. Great Thank stuff. You. Thanks everyone for the call. It's uh, super exciting to see all the progress and um, the energy. So thanks everyone. Thank you guys. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Yeah, happy Friday. Hey y'all. Thank y'all. Nobody See sounds excited Friday. that it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so Drink start at 1 p.m. I'm excited. Take care, guys. <laughs> See ya. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone.